All right, how's it going, y'all? So today I'm continuing on to my TrueNAS scale tutorials, and this one is going to be on everything you need to do as soon as you start up the very first time, and just things you really want to set up and you do not want to forget about. This is going to be things like taking snapshots, making sure scrubs are running, making sure you've got smart tests running, all these different things that you need to make sure are set up whenever you start off on a new TrueNAS build. So I do this pretty much every time I implement one for a client and we're going to make sure that these are all running because if you don't have everything running, especially something like a scrub test, it can really hurt you. Then for something like a snapshot, it is so nice to be able to have. I'm going to talk about those here, but these are going to be some really important things that pretty much everybody should enable. And I'm going to talk through different settings for different people though, for some things specifically like snapshots. And so the very first thing we're going to do is make sure our backup is running. And so this is just something general that's more of on a TrueNAS core thing than TrueNAS scale thing because TrueNAS scale automatically backs up the configuration file, basically your entire web interface, every single night to the system data set at 3.45 a.m. So just make sure your device is not off at that time. If you have like a scheduled power off, make sure not to have that at 345. And if you do, you probably can figure out when to change it. You might have to really dive into it. Or you could do things like just make sure to manually back it up. And the way you can manually back it up is go in here and we are going to go into system settings, general, manage configuration down here. And we are just going to download the file. So this right here is the file. And anytime you make a lot of major changes, it's not a bad idea to just download one of these off. Just leave it in your downloads thing. If you need it, you need it. If you don't, you don't. But they're very small and it's not a bad idea to always do that anytime you do a lot of big things. Or especially if you're about to just reconfigure a lot of things, it's not a bad idea. It takes two seconds to make that click and just download it really quick, just in case but that is backups. Thankfully now it's automatically backed up every single night, especially considering how small that file is. There's no reason not to. All right, so that is backups. And so now the next thing we wanna go ahead and do is make sure that our disks are having smart tests run. Smart tests, there's two different types, a long and a short. And essentially it's a self test of the drive so that the drive can say, hey, am I about to fail? And so you want to run a short one very often and then a long one every few months or so because the long ones can take a long time. But to do that, we just go into data protection and go down here into our smart tests. And we're actually going to create two. One of them, a weekly one that's going to be a short test and then a bi-monthly one, so every other month for a long test. So we're just going to add it. I would do all drives, no reason not to, unless you've got a specific drive you want to test more often because it's starting to throw some errors. That's not a bad idea and we are going to select the type. This one's going to be our short one, and we're gonna call it short to smart. And for the schedule, we are going to do it weekly. Sundays make a lot of sense at 2 a.m. So that is going to be our short test on all drives, and so we're gonna save that one off. And now we're also going to add one here for all drives as well. That is going to be the long test, and long can be very long. And we are going to do it by monthly. And so this will do it by monthly, as we can see, every other month. And so that will run the test every other month. Long tests are not nearly as crucial to run as smart tests, the short ones. I've never really had a long test be that useful for me, but they can be helpful. And so running them every other month is not a bad idea. You can also specify the day if you need to, so just say, only ever do it on the Sunday and get to some very specifics like that. But it's not a bad idea to let them run. All right, and so that is number two. So number two is setting up smart tests, making sure our disks are healthy. I'm actually quite surprised smart tests are not automatically enabled, but that's there. All right, and so now on to number three, and it is just right here, and that is going to be our scrubs. You wanna make sure you're running a scrub at least every probably three months. They are very aggressive here and running it every single week which I think is probably too much, but it does not hurt. It totally depends how long it's gonna take for you. If you got a multi-petabyte pool, you probably do not want to run that every single week because there's a decent chance by the time it's done, it's gotta run again, and you're never gonna have good performance. And realistically, bit rot's not gonna just set in overnight with a ton of errors. And so running every three months is probably fine, 
but it's not a bad idea to leave it at that and you can change it here. Thankfully, they do have it enabled by default. We can also just set up it, anything we'd like to here. And unfortunately, it is all by pool. You can't just say do it always. They've already got this set up by default, so that is very good. But make sure those are running. And a scrub essentially goes through, reads every single file on the pool, and make sure it does not have any errors. So it checks all the checksums, says, okay, yep, there's no bit rot, there's no corruption, there's nothing bad has happened to this file, we know it's good. Now, in the case where bit rot has occurred and the file is corrupt, it'll be able to detect it and actually be able to clean it up and fix it without ever even really telling you. So it'll just go, huh, well, that's not right, and fix it. And that way, the file never gets corrupted. As long as the file is not too corrupt, the smart test will be able to fix it no problems whatsoever. And so that's why you wanna run them fairly often is because if you have too many errors stacking up, well now you've got a real issue because it can only repair so many errors. And so those are our first three. And now onto number four is going to be very custom depending on exactly your setup, but it is also just as crucial and it is snapshots. The best feature of ZFS, in my opinion, other than the data protection it has, is the fact that it has snapshots. That is why BTRFS and ZFS are just such amazing file systems, is the ability to have snapshots and even snapshot replication. Snapshots allow you to restore your entire file system point in time at any time with a very low overhead and only storing deltas. It's practically the reason why copy on write file systems were created and it is so useful. So you really wanna make sure every single pool you has has at least some kind of periodic snapshot, even if you're just storing them for a day. This way, if you make a stupid delete or anything like that, you can recover from it. It's also built in ransomware protection against your most common threat. And that's where a computer on the network that has access to the file server goes hostile and gets infected. It will then go ahead and encrypt the entire file server, demanding ransomware. If you have snapshots, you can just roll back those changes just like that. It is so nice and means you never have to restore from backup. And even if you don't have a backup, you should have a backup. You can still restore your files from this. So everybody should have at least some form of this. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit add and we are going to do it for every single set we've got. And for our basic schedule, for most users, what I would recommend is probably two weeks is fine. And dailies. You can do a lot more custom ones. There's so much more stuff you can do here. But the default one here where you've got a snapshot of the day for two weeks is fine. You probably can even expand this out to probably four weeks. And essentially what will happen is from the moment you take a snapshot, till the moment you remove it, which it will be in this case four weeks, it'll be essentially four weeks from the moment you delete a file to the moment you get your space back. But in those four weeks, you can restore that file without having to go to backups or anything like that. So it's still on the disks. So that's what it costs. But a nice thing you can do is just bulk delete snapshots and then go, okay, I'm running out of space. I just cleaned up my NAS. I've deleted a bunch of files I don't need. I know I don't need them. I know I need the space today. And so what you can do is you can force that to happen and just select all those old snapshots, delete them, and then you will immediately get your space back. But definitely make sure to set up snapshots. And I've got a more customized video on that. They are super, super, super helpful. All right, and so now onto our very final one, and that is not going to be actually shown fully in this video. It is going to be a backup. You can back up your NAS however you like to. There's rsync, replications, and cloud sync. Cloud Sync goes to a cloud. RSync can go to pretty much any other server in the world that runs RSync, so a Synology, anything. And there's replication. Replication is essentially sending a copy of the exact file system using ZFS snapshots, actually, to another TrueNAS scale box. And so that way you can have a active backup file system that can turn over just like that. And so if you do have an entire file server go down, you can recover almost instantly but make sure to pick one of these and back up your data. I'm not saying you have to back up your entire file server. No, for people that's just too expensive and people aren't gonna do it. But what you need to do is you need to sit down and say, these are the pools I care about. 
These are the family photos. This is my employee's tax information that I really need to make sure we've got. Everything like that, make sure that gets backed up somehow. There's a lot of options here. Pick one of them and go with it. I'm gonna do in-depth tutorials on every single one of these options eventually. And so just pick one of them and go with it. And make sure to check your backups at least once a month at minimum. Set up a thing on your calendar every six months to check your backups and make sure you can restore from them. Even if it's just restoring a single file, make sure you've got the ability to restore in some capacity because a backup that's never tested is going to end up failing and then is going to be absolutely useless. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. I really hope this was helpful. I've wanted to do just a basic, hey, this is everything you need to know to get started and just things that if you don't set them up, they can kind of bite you in the butt later on. So that was this video. I'm gonna have a whole series on this, so check the playlist down below for it on a full setup guide for true NAS scale. So leave any other tutorials you like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.